Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to work on a bear squat. A bear squat is part of a series of mobility drills and conditioning drills. If you do them slow, they are mobility drills. If you do them fast, they are conditioning drills. You need to practice them both ways eventually. Sometimes you practice it slow to work on that mobility. Sometimes you practice it fast. This one is a range of movement that people need to recover. It is part of making sure that we are mobile enough to do certain types of get-ups under stress later on. This movement is going to start from our child's position or child's pose as it's sometimes called in yoga. For this position, we are gonna start with our knees closer together. Some versions of child will have your knees far apart. It's up to you how to do it. We are gonna coach it today with our knees closer together. If you need to put something down underneath your knees, do that. It's really just a comfort thing for me and it also helps me figure out if my knees are always going back in the same position. If my knees end up off of this starting position, then I know that I either move my hands or my feet and I'm creeping in the movement. We're trying not to creep in the movement. Starting from our kneeling position, scoop your abs. Don't let your rib cage lift up. Drive your rib cage down, lean back as far as you can, verticalize your spine. Reach out with two hands. This is the distance that your hands and your feet would be apart for say a push-up or for a down dog. We are gonna start in that down dog position. Our goal is to keep the center of our chest in space. We're trying not to move our shoulders very much. It will move in the beginning for most people. If you haven't practiced it in a long time, they will definitely move somewhat, but the goal is to move the knees. Starting position, seiza, scoop the belly, find the distance of your hands, roll your toes underneath. Good push up distance, just to check. Bring your toes slightly forward, legs, perfectly straight. Drive your heels into the ground. Keep your elbows locked out. If your elbows start to bend, drive, drive, drive. Move your shoulders away from your ears towards your hands. Bend at the knees. Touch your knees down. They should touch the target. Drive your heels into the ground. Lift your tailbone up. Touch your knees down. Drive your tailbone up. Touch your knees down. Drive your tailbone up. In this position, push your heart straight into the ground. If our heart is up away from the ground, drive through the shoulders to open the upper body. Touch the knees down, straighten it out. Touch the knees down, straighten it out. Touch the knees down, straighten it out. At the end, knees down, roll your toes underneath. You should be back in the child's position. A lot of these movements start and end in the child's position. That's how you find the distance for your push-up. That's how you find the distance for your up dog, for your down dog. So we go to and from that position repeatedly in body weight training when we're trying to do it for the purpose of learning to get up off the ground more efficiently. This range of movement is not extreme in any way. Every human on the planet should be able to get to this range of movement. Many people in the modern world have lost the ability to straighten out their legs and get into a good down dog position. Some styles of training like yoga might advocate holding that solid position for long periods of time, but that's very hard on most people mentally. Holding a position that you're not good at or not efficient at is very challenging. Oftentimes, as they get tired, the position gets worse instead of better. Practicing something like this as a bear squat, you could set a timer for 60 seconds or 90 seconds, and you can do the movement. Because you're moving in and out of the position, you will trick yourself into holding the position longer and actually making it better. Because you're loading in and out of the position, you statistically have more opportunities to learn to do it better. If you hold a static pose, you get one chance to learn. If you do it as a time under tension exercise, you load in and load out of it, you could get 10, 20, 30 opportunities how to move into the correct position. The goal is that your hands and your feet start in one position, you get up to your down dog, you move your knees, you push your heart, your chest, towards the ground, focus on your breathing, drive your heels into the ground, straighten your legs out as straight as they can possibly be over and over and over again. This is a normal human range of movement. 